Okay, so this is the 787 fuel system description. As you can see by the synoptic display over here in the left panel, we have two wing tanks, one on the left wing and one on the right wing, and then we have a center tank. Each of these tanks has two pumps, AC powered. We have the pump switches right here, and they correspond to the different pumps that are on the synoptic display right here. On the fuel panel, on the overhead panel, this little square right here. It includes the fuel pump switches as well as the balance switch and the fuel jettison system. As we know, uh, fuel jettison systems are required in aircraft that have takeoff weights that are greater than their maximum landing weight. So the 787 quite obviously has a fuel jettison system. The system has two nozzles, right? one on the left wing, one on the right wing. As a fuel to remain knob, this is usually an automatic situation. Uh, automatic and the arm button which basically turns the system on. Fuel pump operation in the 787 is quite sim simplistic. Basically for engine start all main tank pumps should be switched to the on position like so. Right now I don't have anything running I'm connected to the external power so we have four pressure lights illuminated. If there is fuel in the center tank the center tank pumps should also be turned on to be used during engine start. We turn them on now, pressure lights illuminate, engines aren't running, and we don't have any fuel in the center tanks at the moment. But I'm going to demonstrate how this system works basically on the ground by starting up the APU. The APU draws fuel when AC power is available from the aft left pump. The left main tank and it uses the left aft pump turns on automatically whether or not this button is pressed on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the fuel pumps back off and we're going to go ahead and start the APU. So we'll hit the status page, hit the APU switch, turn that to start, spring loaded comes back to the on position, RPMs are rising, EGT is rising. And once we have the APU running you can see I have no fuel pump switches turned on, but the APU right here is being fed fuel using the aft left aft fuel pump. And you can see that the pressure light has disappeared because it is being used for the APU. Okay, we're in the air now, flying along 20,000 feet. So um, I came up here to demonstrate some of the concepts that I was explaining on the ground um, and going a little bit deeper into the fuel system itself. So the first thing I want to talk about that we talked about on the ground was the fuel jettison system. This small portion of the fuel panel up here. The process is simple. You open up the guards for the left and right nozzles which are on each wing and you push them on. Next thing you do, you want to leave this here, fuel to remain. That is pushed on so it's automatic. You leave that in. Then all you do is push arm and as you can see on the fuel synoptic display over here we have fuel flowing from the tanks out. And you can see to remain right here, fuel to remain is now magenta right beneath the fuel synoptic display. If we had fuel in the center tanks and I turn the pumps on, right now you'll see that we don't have any fuel in there so we have the low pressure illumination or low pressure illumination light come up and with amber X's on the on the pumps. The center pumps are what's called a, or the center pumps have what's called an override or jettison. They're the override or jettison pumps in the fuel system, which means they have a higher output pressure than either of the main tanks. When we have fuel in the center tanks and we have the center tank pumps turned on, the center pump fuel or the center tank fuel would be will be depleted before the main tank fuel. If we were to have an engine failure and we lose one engine and the generator is associated with that engine, what the fuel pumps will do, since they require a lot of electricity to function, is that the fuel system will automatically determine the best pumps to operate. Certain pumps will be load shed. The way that is indicated is that the same like if you turn off the pump right here you'll have the pressure illumination light or pressure light illuminate and there will be an ICAST message or rather uh, the word load shed will appear on the fuel system up the page somewhere around here. 
So the 787 has a very sophisticated fuel system in the way that if we lose a pump, if one fails, the other one has enough power or the ability to supply fuel for the one engine, for the engine that it corresponds to. So if we lose the left forward pump, the left aft pump, we'll be able to supply fuel for the engine. But that's not the only thing. If we were to lose both pumps on one side, just like this, or even if the main uh, pump pressure is too low, the engine can actually draw fuel from its corresponding main tank through a suction feed, and this suction feed bypasses the pumps. You can see right here the engine is kind of drawing fuel from the, still drawing from the main tank over here. However, there is a little caveat to this. As the plane climbs up in altitude, there is dissolved air within the fuel that expands and is released because of the low pr air pressure. This may collect in the suction line and restrict airflow. You gotta think of it as the airplane's form of decompression sickness. Now this will eventually clear up after the airplane reaches the cruise. And that and how long it takes to deplete all that air depends on the altitude, the fuel temperature, and the type of fuel being used. So the best method to use is when you're climbing, if you ha don't have two fuel pumps on one side, you use the manual crossfeed right here while you climb. Once you start cruising, then you can turn off the crossfeed and the engine can get the fuel suction feed. You don't want to use the crossfeed the entire time of the flight because that creates prolonged use of the crossfeed creates a fuel imbalance, which is what we're going to talk about next. So I've introduced a fuel imbalance to the sim. The 787 defines a fuel imbalance as a difference of 200 pounds or greater of fuel between the main tanks. I've introduced about a 600 to 500 pound difference between the main tanks here. On the 787, when you have a fuel imbalance, you'll receive some indications. For example, and not entirely um, correct in the sim, you'll have a yellow amber or yellow or amber pointer pointing toward the tank that has the least amount of fuel in it. In the real plane, when you have a fuel imbalance condition, on the primary ICAST over here, you'll have what's called a fuel expansion display. And in this display, it displays the fuel tank quantity in all three tanks. And this amber pointer that is pointing to the fuel tank in the synoptic display would actually be pointing to the tank on the fuel expansion display. If you have the fuel imbalance and you're doing nothing about it, that's why the pointer is amber. When the pointer is amber and you're doing nothing about it, there would also be an, icomp an accompanying ICAST message saying fuel imbalance. So, how do we fix this? Well, 787 has a couple of ways to, de to deal with a fuel imbalance. The easiest way is to just use the automatic system. And that is the balance right here, this balance button. The balance button, once you push that in, it transfers fuel from the main tank that has the most fuel in it to the tank that has the least fuel in it. It does this by transferring the fuel from the fullest main tank through its defuel or jettison valve and into the lowest tanks through its inboard fuel valve. And the transfer stops automatically when the fuel is balanced. Once the imbalance difference gets below 200 pounds, this amber pointer will turn white. In the fuel expansion display, the words fuel balanced will appear at the top. So what I can go ahead is I can go ahead and push the balance button and you can see that now fuel is now flowing from the fullest main tank into the lowest main tank. Now as I said before, once that fuel uh, balances itself, the uh, system will automatically turn itself off. And there it is. The fuel system has balanced the tanks and now the fuel balance system shuts itself off with a little fault light there on the bottom. So we go. Now the second way to do it is the manual crossfeed. Unfortunately the sim doesn't, dis doesn't actually simulate that very well, but I can still demonstrate it using the buttons on the panel. 
imagine we have the left main tank drained again, you would first open the crossfeed valve. The valve light illuminates while it's in transit. Now it's open, and it says fuel crossfeed on. Uh, the sim being the sim it is, the crossfeed valve actually isn't open as displayed here on the synoptic display. So that's the first step. You open the crossfeed valve, and then you turn off the pumps inside the tank that have the lowest amount of fuel in them. So in this case, it would have been the left tank. And what this does, instead of transferring fuel from one tank to another tank, it just merely lets the engine, left engine in this case, use fuel from the right tank. So the fuel from the right tank is just traveling from the tank itself through the crossfeed valve and into the left engine.